Good morning. And welcome to a hazy sunrise this morning, Winnipeg. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess they can't all be vivid, can they? Anyway. Uh, well, we made a little bit of progress here yesterday. I've actually got the first coat on there. I thought for a while I wasn't going to, but if you get to the end of the rollback, you'll see that I did. Uh, we got our uh, radar unit here painted. It's uh, it's actually ready to remove from the from the uh, from the uh, self-locking tweezer and uh, put in a safe place. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll explain why I don't want to put it on the part right now, even though the next step sort of calls for it. Uh, Let's, uh, you know what, oh, last night, uh, I, I just went to sleep, and, and I'd slept, gone to sleep for about two hours, and I wake up, and I can sort of feel a cramp forming in my leg. I think it was, I think it was in my shin, the first cramp. <laughs> well, after about two minutes, it was almost like somebody threw a switch. I had three cramps all going on at the same time, and I was... I had this feeling like, oh, take me now, you know, <laughs> that sort of thing. Uh, even though I'm not superstitious anymore, yeah, that's the feeling you had. And, well, it's, I finally was able to get myself out of bed, head to the medicine cabinet, took some aspirin, and uh, I guess maybe half an hour later I was okay again. I was trying to think of, well, I, I was blaming, I was br blaming the increase in water pills that my doctor had given me you know it, it was my suggestion to increase the the dosage i'm not blaming the doctor don't get me wrong uh so uh i uh i thought well if maybe maybe that's what it is because i know that leg cramps can be caused from a lack of moisture in your system so uh uh, I thought, well, maybe that's what it is. And then I remembered, well, no, when I used to get them really bad, you know, oh, five, six years ago, I wasn't even taking the water pills then. So <laughs> I think it's called ferrosamide or something. Anyway, uh, so it, it, it probably wasn't that. But I thought, well, what did I stop doing that I normally do, uh, have, have normally been doing, uh, for the last few years when the when the water pills or when the leg cramps have not been bothering me and I thought well I, I haven't drank as much skim milk as I normally do and I I did read somewhere where calcium a lack of calcium will 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 cause leg cramps or who knows <laughs> I don't know if they really know <laughs> anyway I uh, yeah so uh I better get back on my skim milk <laughs> uh, because there's a lot of calcium in milk, and and I think I think skim milk has just as much calcium in it as whole milk, and it's a lot less fattening. It doesn't taste as good though. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, how did we get onto this? This isn't a cooking show. It's not a dietitian show. It's a, or a health show. It's a, a model ship show. So let's sort of roll back and see how it is we got to this point. Okay, continuing right along here this afternoon. If you remember at the end of our last episode I had put a little bit of glue, just a very tiny amount, right in the right in there, and then I straightened this part up. I, I realize this is completely turned around now to the way it was. Let me just get it to the way you last saw it. Okay. Yeah, I have since glued the rest of it and I used the curing agent. And I think it is probably at the point now where we, we're probably safe to try and um, uh, bend these uh, triangular shaped things in to, to represent bracing. That's, I believe that's what it's supposed to be. Okay, let's uh, let's just do that. Now this is one of those jobs that, unless I was to make a, a whole bunch of jigs 
to hold this exactly st still while I bend the the parts in together. You know, I I don't think I'm going to try and glue them. I think I'm just going to. Uh, I, I'm afraid that if I put put glue on it, it's going to look like a blob of glue. But on the other hand, if I don't, it doesn't afford very much strength here. I, I think I've pretty much got it, except that they aren't like where, where the where the prongs come together, and there's this thing coming up. This they're they're not quite touching. They're they're almost touching, but not quite. I think if I was to use maybe like CA medium, it would sort of fill the gap. But then on the other hand, we would lose the the delicateness of it, if you know what I mean. Like. <laughs> Since when do I worry about delicateness, right? There are some things that you just can't use Andy's photo etch bender for. Oh! Oh! I hope I didn't damage it. I guess it, uh, it pinged out of my tweezers here. No, no harm done. Um, yeah, what are we going to do here? Do I glue it or do I just leave it and paint it? I, I uh, you know, if I, if I don't glue it, it's the kind of thing that when I'm running Easy Line, it could very easily get some Easy Line stuck in there. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll have to think about this. Okay, I've, I've pretty much got the uh, triangles touching the antenna. They might be, it might be like a tenth of a millimeter off. I'll put the macro lens on and show you. And I was thinking that maybe what I should do here is uh, uh, paint it, put the first coat on while it's, while it's on the tweezer there. And then I'll mount it on, on the uh, little plastic piece if I haven't lost it already. It's, it's probably in the tin. And uh, I'll do the second coat. And I think what I'll do, I'm going to use the 77. I'm not going to use the 56. I'm going to use the 77 because it is darker than the 66 superstructure color. And uh, it'll, stand, uh, it'll stand out all being well. And... Uh, uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm going to rely on the paint, where you know where the paint is touch, filling the gap. You might say to sort of act like glue. It, it will to a certain extent, not as strong as CA glue, but it'll, it'll kind of help. At least uh, Easy Line won't won't get in there. Okay, I'll, I'll put the macro lens on and show you here. Okay, this is my most delicate brush. And I'll, I'll just start in here on the base first. And this is the uh, thinned out version of the 77. This is moving around more than I thought it would. And I may not be always holding it uh, at a good angle for you, but... Uh, And, and I know I'm probably going to be maybe putting too much paint on, but I'm just trying to cover cover up the uh, the the CA glue here. Okay, am I looks like a, a little gap or something. There we got it. I got it now. Alright, I think I've more or less got the base. Now we'll get the center part. I, I realize you can't see me painting it, but you see it when I spin it around. I 
I know I know from your perspective because you're so close it, it looks like I'm really sopping the, the paint on but but trust me I'm not um, so I'll, I'll try not to bump this right now because then it'll go out of the field of view and I think I've more or less got everything perfect And, and as I mentioned, I will paint the, the back side of it afterwards, after I take it off of the rotator, that is. Okay, just let me check the uh, the monitor here. What are you seeing? Oh yeah, more or less. Uh, okay, let's, let's uh, see if we can work our way out to the end of the antenna here and, and not fill in. I may have to I may have to do this this part of it off off camera. Now, I want to try and get in there and not not fill up the antenna. Just want to almost dry brush it, you might say, and then the sec hopefully the second coat will I think what's happening is my brush is drying out. Alright, now let me just check the monitor while I turn this because <laughs> as I've said a thousand times you're seeing it better than I am. Okay, it doesn't look like I filled up, got anything filled up there. Alright, here we go for the, for the other one here. I'll just do the hard, hard angle first. Oops, sorry about that. And, uh, you know, when, when you have such a small amount on your brush like that, it, it doesn't take very long for, for your brush to dry out. All right, now just let me check the, the monitor. Have I filled it in or should I? Quit while I'm well. It's good here. I'm not seeing any photo etch glinting any. Oh yeah, there is right there on that on that upright piece. Uh, looking good. Maybe right in here a little bit. Yeah, look looking good to me. Just let me check the monitor here. I have to put my other glasses on. Seeing a little bit of a uh, photo etch there on the on that one upright. This is probably driving everybody crazy. So how come I can't see it when I put my my uh, 
my strong glasses on. Well, maybe I'm going to have to just take this off the uh, off the rotator and just hold it up to the light and, and just do it manually, if you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, well, you get the idea. I think I did not too bad. Not too bad. I, I might not need a second coat. You know that? Might not need a second coat. Well, I hope I can find that little piece of photo I said I saw glinting. Okay, I realize you can't see it from way back there, but in the top of this little bracket, this little part here that is supposed to mount on the on the deck, uh, there's a little tiny square hole. Now, I don't know how they managed to, to do that to get it square, but they did. And uh, the idea is that it's the tongue on this thing is supposed to fit in that square hole. I don't think it's deep enough. I, I, it'd be nice if it just stuck in there and it would stay in there and then I could see it in place. But I think in all likelihood it's going to want to fall over one way or the other. But the only way to find out is, is to try it. So once again we're going to stick on the macro lens. Now I was going to use my other metal tweezers. I think I'm going to be scratching the paint off of this. So I think it's strong enough that I can hold it like that. Now, what's going to happen here? No, that's, that's going to fall off. Okay, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill that hole out, even though it will be round. I'm going to drill it out so that so that this thing will drop down into the hole about a millimeter. At least that's the plan. Okay, let's carefully find a a place to put this now. But 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 look at how how small and delicate this is. I can see where there's a few places where I'm going to have to touch up with the with the paint anyway. Or with, yeah, because I can see photo etch glinting through in different places. The paint is dry now. Okay, but, but I, th I think it looks pretty good though. Now I just measured that tongue. And it is, uh, it's not perfectly square. It's uh, seven thousandths of an inch one way by thirteen thousandths of an inch the other way. The smallest bit I've got is this one here. And it is fourteen thousandths. So if I'm very careful and drill down into this about a millimeter, uh, this should work. Um, you may try and do it on camera? I'll bet you do. Well, I do too. I mean, doing stuff like this is a lot of fun for me. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's get at it. I mean, if I, if I don't have my glasses on, I can barely see this. <laughs> my goodness, I so got to clean this mess up. It's getting worse and worse. All right. I'm shooting this uh, scene here so that you can see how I've got it set up. I got my drill clamped down so that it, it won't move around on me when I'm squeezing the trigger and it looks like it's running pretty true probably a little bit of run out but not much in fact they're surprisingly little all right uh we will put on the macro lens we will move in i'm going to have to think of something to hold this this thing because if i try to hold it in my fingers my fingers are probably going to not hold it straight so maybe uh, if I can clamp it in, maybe in my rubber tweezers here. How would that be? Yeah, that that might work. I can clamp it in my rubber tweezers, and that way it'll it'll be a, it'll it'll stay straighter. Now I only have to go in a millimeter, so I'm going to recompose here, and uh, yeah. My goodness, it's noisy outside. <laughs> wow. 
Well, if I don't get to use the two camera system at least once a week, I'll get the shakes. Yeah, that's pretty true. All right. Let's get the other eyes on here very carefully. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the part to the bit. Well, I guess I have to. It's clamped down, right? I might have gone in a little bit further than I had anticipated. Let me see here. Yeah, I think that's enough. Oh yeah. That's enough. Okay. Let's try that. Now that was fun for me. Ta-da! Now, I used to have the Microsoft uh, sound on a WAV file in my computer, and I, I, don't, I don't have it anymore, but one of the other creators just recently got himself into hot water over copyright infringements, and I don't want to end up in the same boat. It could be that that Microsoft ta-da sound is... Uh, if you remember that was the one of their one of their originals. I think it goes back to Windows 3 or something. It was their sound. Very famous sound. Um th this is this is uh, going to be just fine. Just fine. I wonder if maybe I've got it going down a little bit too far. Maybe it, it should be maybe up just a little bit. Maybe I should plug that hole. Well, I'll think about it. Okay, here's what I've decided to do. We're going to glue this in place, probably using the CA extra thin so it'll set quickly. If it drops down too far, uh, you know, I only want it to go in about a millimeter because it is supposed to be sticking up above this uh, pedestal thing. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to try and find my extra, extra thin now. Just a little drop of it. So I don't want it to be going down and and getting into the tweezers and gluing everything into the tweezer. Now, I, I, I know that it, it might be a little bit crooked, but that, that, that'll be okay. We can always straighten it afterwards. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. Let me get one of, uh, one of Gabe's uh, Q-tip things here. Whoops. Don't want to hear any whoopses. Okay. Okay, this, this is a used one, but that's okay. It we'll probably still work a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Just, just get rid of the, get rid of the worst of it here. We don't need that much on there. There. That should, uh, 
That should cure nice and solid and then we'll, we'll just straighten it up afterwards. Okay, here's the uh, latest plan. I'm just going to quickly paint everything off camera, get it done, and uh, then we'll take a quick look at it and uh, then we're going to move on. Okay, everything's got two coats now, more or less. And uh, I am not going to straighten it up right now. I'm going to wait until we get it mounted uh, on the on the deck because it will undoubtedly have to be adjusted a little bit later anyway. You can probably see there that some of the paint is still wet. And uh, yeah, every time you bend this stuff, it, it weakens at the place it bends. So uh, I, in all likelihood, uh, you know, Murphy's Law, I'd probably be bending it the wrong way to straighten it, and then I'd have to straighten it back, and you know how it goes. Back and forth, back and forth, and next thing you know, you've broken it off. So I'm just going to leave it the way it is. I'm uh, going to just leave it in the tweezers overnight, and uh, uh, put it in a safe place in the morning. Uh, in, the, in the meantime, let's uh, move on here and see what the next thing is we have to do. Okay, probably about five minutes ago I was setting up here to continue on. <laughs> and, uh, or to, no, I said to, to move on, that was it. We were going to move on. Okay, so I was getting ready to move on. And uh, I thought, okay, uh, I'll say we're all done step 34. 35 and then I think okay we got to drop this little part down and I, and I look at it and I realize I haven't painted it yet so uh, yeah I guess uh, we're not done step 34 maybe uh, it just depends on how I feel it's getting pretty late already what do we got here yeah 20 to 9 roughly uh, I don't know if I should try and put the first coat on quickly or not Maybe quickly isn't a good idea because I'll end up breaking off the ladders. No. I'm just wondering how how am I gonna how am I gonna hold this thing? Maybe with uh see I wanna hold it from the inside again. So that I can I can turn it this way and that way. If I if I put a uh if I put a clamp on it, I can't paint where the where the clamp comes. I'll think of something. You know what? I think I'm going to call it a night, even though it's uh, I'm still feeling a little bit gung ho. Um, yeah, we'll see you in the morning. Okay, it's not morning. After I shoved my chair back, I thought, you know, I'm not ready to quit yet. So uh, I put the first coat on this, I thought may as well, and then it'll dry out really, really good overnight. And uh, I do believe that there is a certain amount of curing that goes on with, with this uh, paint, with this XF paint. Um, not as much as, as some uh, uh, acrylic paints when, when they dry, but uh, yeah, all right. Now, we'll see you in the morning. Well, it is morning. And because I do not want to have another night like I had last night, okay, I think you get the idea. Yeah, no. I was saying that I was going to put this in a safe place. And uh, I think I'll just put it in the little box with all the other tiny little parts that I've got made up. And Now I can't remember, did we look at this on the rotator? Well, we've, we've probably looked, on it, looked at it on the rotator to death already, so I, I think we've done enough here. Anyway, yeah. Earlier this morning when I was changing our sunrise camera back into the bird feeder camera, 
I noticed our friend Pesky the Squirrel trying to scrounge some of the seeds that the birds you might say were beaking out of the bird feeder. <laughs> yeah, Pesky's probably really cursing that squirrel guard that I put on last year. Okay, here we go. This may or may not work out as planned, but we're going to give it a try here. Um, debating, should I use my small brush here or should I use a bigger brush? I think the small brush might be uh, a little safer for getting the paint under the ladders. It's I can see photo etch a little bit on certain places on the ladders, but I think for the most part I did a pretty good job with my uh, first coat. Okay, may as well start here. I'm just going to the ladder.
this this thing here, that's a I think that's from a a push out pin or something on the uh ejection pin in the in the molding process, but it kinda looks like a a porthole, doesn't it? Maybe I should fill it full of that uh fake glass stuff. What they, what they call it micro crystal clear. I wonder what's happened right here. Did I get is that a sort of a greasy spot maybe? Another thing that might help is if I went around with put black paint or something in the Now right here where I'm painting right right now this part, I believe that a mast is is going to go there. Why is it that that's light there like that? Oh well, we'll see what happens when it dries. some of the excess out from around that detail. There, yeah, there we go again. Okay. Um, I am going to do the rest of this off camera because it's going to be too awkward to be going in all the different angles. And then we'll take a nice close look at it on the rotator after it dries. I think that when it dries, we're not going to see places like like here and here and here. Okay. Now I'm still seeing places where I think it looks like it might still be a little bit wet. Uh, it could be that uh, possibly I got uh, CA glue on, you know, where it's not supposed to be and the, the paint just doesn't cover well there. But on the other hand, when this thing is blended in with a whole bunch of other little pieces, uh, I think it's going to be all right. So I'm not going to give it a third coat. We'll just uh, leave well enough alone. Um, this episode is a lot longer than I thought it was. I, maybe that painting segment, I should have uh, shortened it or fast-forwarded it or something or not even put it in. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. And all being well... We'll be seeing you tomorrow.